For the record, I recorded this video like two and a half months ago. I don't know why it took so long to get out, but it's here now. So there you go. Enjoy. Hello everyone, welcome to the cabin. My name is Mo and welcome to another in-depth character design video. Please excuse my voice if I sound congested, it's because I am. Last time I was like this, I had COVID. Uh, I don't have COVID this time, but I do have a cold. I have 17 characters I need to design for a story I'm working on and I've only designed six of them so far, one of which being the character I'm making today. Last time I made one of these videos, I designed James Cooper and today I'm going to be designing Camilla Norwood. Camilla, along with a lot of the other characters in this series, has been a part of my community for a very long time. I'm not sure why I had this be part of her character, but she was always intended to have kind of a British voice. And I don't know why. It never added anything to her character. There wasn't any reason for it, but I just always pictured her having like a Northern British accent. I don't know if she would still have that accent. I don't know what my characters are supposed to sound like. I know some people have very distinct ideas of what they want their characters' voices to sound like, but I have no idea. Coming up with voice claims for them is always a big challenge. That's just a little fact about her previous iterations. I have no idea if it's still canon, but you know, little, little fun, fun tidbit for you. For those of you who have been around for a long time probably know that Camilla was always intended to be a love interest for Ronnie. When I started my first comic fantasy in 2016, her role was pretty much just the love interest for the main character Mo, who would later be renamed to Ronnie. For context, Ronnie used to be my persona and a self-insert character in my first comic. I feel like originally Camilla was used as a coping mechanism for still being closeted. When I started fantasy, I hadn't yet come out to my family about being a lesbian, so I think I found a lot of comfort in being able to draw my persona with another girl doing couple-y things. And Ronnie and Camilla being love interests stayed that way for a very long time. It only changed in the later half of working on another comic of mine called Camaraderie where I started to realize that their relationship was more of just a friendship or a sisterly bond rather than a romantic one. I didn't connect this feeling to anything other than their relationship at first. Camilla was still a lesbian and would later on have a girlfriend. However, when I started writing this new story, I realized that it isn't just her relationship with Ronnie, it's her relationship with everyone. I don't see Camilla as someone who experiences romantic attraction or wants a romantic relationship in her life, so I made her a romantic. I didn't know what aromantic was for a long time. I knew it wasn't asexual, but I knew it was something similar. I really learned a lot about it through friends and content creators who have opened up about their own experiences being aromantic, and that helped a lot when it came to me deciding what Camilla's sexuality was going to be. Sexuality doesn't play an important role in the story that I'm writing, but I still think it's important to give characters certain sexualities and labels so that other people feel represented. So I knew that Camilla was aromantic, but it didn't feel right to call her asexual as well, and maybe it's just because of my feed or the content that I often see, but I haven't seen a lot of representation for people who are aromantic but are not asexual. Even though sexuality doesn't play a role in the story that I'm working on, I still think it's important for people to know that those two identities can be separated. I've met plenty of people who identify as asexual but not aromantic and vice versa. I mean, I'm an example of that. I identify as asexual, but I'm very happy in a romantic relationship, and that's something that I want in my life. Camilla, on the other hand, doesn't experience romantic attraction or really wants that in her life, but she does feel sexual attraction, and that's okay. She doesn't have a romantic or even a queer platonic relationship with Ronnie. Maybe I'll make them have a QPR in the future, but as it stands right now, they only see each other as close friends or family. Through the years, Camilla's personality has really flip-flopped. She was really angry and gloomy in Fantasy and Ameliorate, but when camaraderie happened, she did a complete 180 and ended up being super bubbly and happy. And when I wrote Road to the Remedy, she was kind of mysterious and kept to herself a lot, and now she's very bubbly again. She's a people person, an extrovert, and she likes to be around her friends and family. But even though she's bubbly, she isn't naive. She's quick on her feet and knows what to do in the face of danger. Camilla is a cat, and she is the only strictly cat character of mine. Blanc is a tiger, which is part of the feline family, but she is straight up just a cat. So I like these character traits because they point towards her being a feline. Her being quick to act and knowing what to do in the face of danger reminds me of how people say cats always land on their feet and they have nine lives. Adding on to that, calico cats, which is the cat that she is, are known to be bringers of good fortune or luck. Which is kind of funny because luck is something that's associated with the color green, at least for me, and Camilla was also someone I associated with the color green up until now. I think her favorite color would still be green, but let me explain. Camilla has always had green eyes, but when designing her, I really discovered that her green eyes didn't match with what I wanted her color palette to be. She's always had a warm color palette and that contrasted nicely with her green eyes, but this time I wanted her to have a cool color palette and the blue against the green really didn't work well. Even though the blue was very grayscale and dull, it didn't really look like blue, but it still didn't clash nicely. It was the same struggle that I had in the last episode with James and his blue eyes and purple shirt. So I decided to make a very big change for Camilla's character. I decided to change her eye color from green to brown, which I know that doesn't seem like a huge thing, but 
To me it was because she has always, always had green eyes and every single design that she's ever had, she's always had green eyes. It was one of the biggest defining traits of her character is that she had these bright green eyes. But when I look at her now with her brown eyes, it suits her a lot more in my opinion. And honestly, I was very hesitant to take away her green eyes because I felt like people would be mad at me if I took them away, but I mean, she's my character and I can change her eye color if I want to, so I did. She's got brown eyes now. Speaking of color, there is something I wanted to touch on. So I haven't actually used this design technique a whole lot. I've only been using it for these characters and a few others before. So I wouldn't say I have a lot of experience with it. So every time something new happens, I'm like, oh my God, that's, that's, that's different. I haven't done that before. And something different that happened this time is I went back and redid her color picking process for her skin tone after I already decided what it was gonna be, which is something I've never done before. I have always been very sure of what I wanted the skin tone to be. And then the hair tone just happened afterwards. But after I chose her hair color, I knew I wanted to keep her hair color but the skin tone didn't quite look right to me, so I had to go back and do it over again. I already really liked what her colors were before because I did this whole color picking process when I redesigned her for Road to the Remedy, and I really liked how those colors looked, but I wanted to do it anyway, just to see if I would find something I like better. But I really do think that I liked how her skin tone was. I changed her hair color, but I really did like her skin tone, so it ended up looking very similar to what I had before. But yeah, that was cool. I never had to do that before, but uh, now I know that I can do that if I need to. <laughs> I gave her short hair this time also. I She's never had short hair. She's always had super long hair, but I gave her short hair this time and it looks great. I think it looks very cute. And I gave her a little headscarf thing that she wraps around her head and ties at the back and it's very cute. I don't often give my characters hair accessories, but I want to start doing that more because they look nice. It just makes it look more put together and I, I think it looks, it, it's, it's very cute. I like it. I like how it looks. Now that I'm looking at her, like she's really changed as a character. She's, she's very feminine now and I really like that she's very feminine, but she used to be such a masculine character and I used to represent her as a very masculine character. And maybe that was because back then I still had this internalized heteronormative idea that there had to be like a man in the relationship or something. So since Ronnie was a representation of myself and I saw myself as a very feminine person back then, I think I felt the need to make Camilla a masculine character since, you know, back then those two were romantically involved. But she's really changed into more of a feminine presenting character and I think it suits her a lot more. She is is the first character that I've given a skirt to so far in these designs. I know Luna did wear a dress in her topside outfit, but so far Camilla's the first one to wear a skirt on a day-to-day -day basis. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with a character wanting to wear a skirt. My girl likes skirts, so she's gonna wear a skirt. I also gave her a different kind of corset because she does live in the Veiled. She was actually born in the Veiled. She's the first character out of the six that I've designed so far that was born in the Veiled. Everyone else so far was born in topside, but she was born in the Veiled. So anyway, as usual, she has that kind of steampunky aesthetic. So I did give her some kind of a corset. I don't know if it is actually a corset, but it's like a corset, but it also has straps. So it's like a shirt. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I saw it on Pinterest and I thought it looked cute. And she's the only character that has this so far. I might give it to another character, but she's the only character so far that has this element to her clothing. And I think it's very cute. She pulls it off well, and she looks like she's very comfortable in that outfit. I did again give her boots because... I don't know. I have some sort of obsession with boots, I guess. They just look nice and I like drawing them, so she's got some boots. I did the same thing for Camilla that I did for Luna, where I recycled parts of an older design to add to this one. I recycled elements of her clothing from an old character design for Mona. Mona is still a character that's in this story, but she's taken on a very different role. But this design of Mona was shown in Road to the Remedy. Well, it wasn't shown, but it was going to be used in Road to the Remedy. But I really liked how her outfit looked and I wanted to try and implement that into Camilla's design. I think she looks so cute in her little outfit and I just she looks like someone I would want to be friends with and that's the kind of vibe that I want her to give so I think I've succeeded in that. <laughs> her nose shape is also something that's pretty unique to her. I don't have another character that has this nose shape yet. Um, Luna has a similar one and I think I might give Eden the same nose shape because I really like it. It's a very pretty nose shape and I like it a lot. She was gonna have this nose shape in Road to the Remedy but her earlier reference sheets didn't really do justice to that and she wasn't actually shown in the comic itself. I never got to put her nose shape on full display like I can now but I really like it and I, I think it suits her face a lot. But anyway, as the usual, I've come to a point where I don't know what else to talk about, but instead of forcing myself to talk about other shit, I'm just gonna end the video here. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, you can find all of my links on screen as well as in the description. There is a link to a card there. And if you'd like to see all of the work that goes into these designs in more detail, you can click the character ref portfolio that is on the front page of that card. And it should bring you to a card that is just the character design work. <laughs> I did experiment 
experiment quite a bit with her eye color, but I didn't actually save any of those. I was just doing it all on one canvas, so I don't have that experiment work, but I do have everything else that went into this design, so if you'd like to see it in higher quality, make sure to go check the link in my description. The designs on these cards get updated way before the videos come out. I also post the designs way in advance on my Instagram, so if you're into early access content, you can find all that there. That's all I've got for this video. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. I will see you in the next one. You keep my life bright, my lights.